Hi boys and girls, Miss Nichols here, and we have a lesson for you on Vincent Van Gogh. And um, I know that in kindergarten, if you're at Anchor or Beacon, you did a lesson on Starry Starry Night, one of the most famous paintings of all time by Vincent Van Gogh. And we talked about how that Vincent um, was in the hospital sometimes because he, he had a sickness and doctors were trying to help him. And when he painted Starry Starry Night, it was out the window of his hospital that he was in. So what we're going to talk about is a part of his life that was after that. So let's look at this map right here for a second. Vincent was born right here, and he had uh, there was six kids in his family. He was the oldest of six. He was born in the Netherlands, and he he did have a, a brother that he was very very close with. His name was Theo. Theo was four four years younger than um, uh, Vincent, and so. Vincent was like all young kids. He loved nature and he loved looking around at the, the different land where he grew up. As he got older, he had an uncle that was quite wealthy. And this uncle was a person that lined up art shows at museums and things like that. And he hired Theo and he hired Vincent to do work for him. And sometimes they were in Paris uh, working at these museums and sometimes in London. And Vincent did that for a few years. And then he was even a missionary for a little bit in Belgium, which is between Netherlands and France. Um, but at about the age of 27, Vincent decided he wanted to start doing some artwork. And that's when he was in Paris working on art with his brother, Theo. He had another good friend, Paul Gugan, which was also an artist at that time. But Vincent noticed that... Um, that it was sort of dark in the Paris area. That meant there was a lot of overcast gray days and he wanted more sunshine. So he decided to go south and he uh, ended up in a town called called Arles, France, which is right down by the water and it's much uh, warmer, more sun, sun sunlight than northern France. He's down here in the south of France. And so when he went there, he thought, I would like to start a place called the Studio of the South. It'll be a place where artists can come and they can live here and we can all have like a little artist community and start to sell our art and just become well known. He bought a house there called the Yellow House and I'll show you a picture of the Yellow House. Here's a picture of the Yellow House and that house isn't there anymore because of World War II. It got knocked down but here was his picture that he, he painted of the yellow house. And um, this was the house where he was going to have other artists come and live. And they were going to have a little art community. He was so excited about it, he drew a picture of it to, for his brother Theo. And he wrote Theo all about the house, how cool it was. And he couldn't wait for Theo to come. And his friend Paul Gugan. So um, I'm going to read you a little bit about... Um, the house. In the winter of 1888, Van Gogh traveled to a town in the south of France called Arles. There he hoped to start a studio of the south where painters could live and work together creating art in the region with more direct sunlight than Paris had had and, uh, and it reminded Van Vincent of the landscape he admired in the Japanese prints. The plan was for the artist Paul Gugan, who was a friend of Vincent, and his art dealer brother Theo to join Vincent in Arles. It took a long time for Gugan to be convinced to go south, giving Vincent plenty of time to get settled and, and, and to paint his surroundings, including his bedroom. When Van Gogh first arrived in Arles, he found a, a hotel, but it was too much money. So then he went and he rented the Yellow House. It was a modest two-story building with a front studio, a back kitchen, and a few rooms upstairs. Being on the courtyard gave the house a slightly strange floor plan. It wasn't square looking, so when we look at his picture, you'll see that it doesn't look square. The front wall and the side walls were not at a 90 degree angle like your bedroom is um, because of the way it sat on the street on the corner. Um, so, he was so excited uh, that he kept writing and drawing pictures to his brother about the room that, that he was in in Arles. And you've seen this picture probably. This is the room that he, 
He did a painting of the room at the yellow house where he was staying, waiting for Theo to come. He's got two pictures on the wall, one of him, one of Theo. He's got um, a couple chairs in here and a little table. And the walls do look a little weird. It's because this wall in front here was, was wide and this part was narrow because it was on the corner of a street. And the building was made to sort of go around the corner. Okay, so we are going to take this picture. Well, I have to show you the next picture. Remember I told you as a good friend, Paul Gugan, and he made a picture of two, he made two portrait, two paintings of the chairs showing um, what he, uh, just because he was so excited that his friend was coming. So he made a picture of his chair. This one was Picasso's chair. And there it says Vincent on this little box back here. He has a pipe back here and some of his tobacco that he smoked back then. And then he had the picture of Gugans. It's much fancier, fancy carpet. Everything's very, very fancy. Um, Paul Gugan um, felt that he... He really was a very successful man, and maybe Vincent felt that way too. And so he made his stuff look a little bit more wealthy, more rich than than um, Vincent's plain kind of chair. So we're going to talk about that period, and we're going to make our own little chair um, as if it was in Vincent's room in the yellow house. So let me show you how we're going to do that. So... Um, it's pretty cool, pretty easy to do, and you can have a little, I'll show you from the side, you can have a little dresser, and you can have chairs, and really all you do is fold paper and make some cuts, so we'll do that right now, and I'll show you. Um, you can add different things on, like the dresser, you can make a little flap and put some glue on it, and make, uh, like he has in his picture, he has a, a blue vase and a, a flower pot. Um, so here's how you do the project. You take a piece of paper and you fold it in half like this, okay, and just fold it and crease it. Then you're going to cut, you're going to cut some, some cuts in it. Now if you want one chair, you're just going to make two cuts for the chair. I put a little dresser so I made two little cuts over here, but if you want two chairs, this one has two chairs. This one has two chairs. So I made two, two bigger cuts and two little. It looks like this. I went cut, 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 and two little ones there. They do need to be sort of the same. If, if one's higher than the other, then the chair sits a little funny. But pretty easy to do. And sort of like a pop-out. Some of you have made pop-out cards. It's along that, that thought. So... Um, let's put some of these up so you can get the idea of them, and we will, I'm going to move the map for a minute and put those there so you can see what we're doing. Um, so here's how we're going to cut it. You're going to hold the fold like this, and boys and girls, I noticed that I cut it about as high as a marker top. And then I measured that to see, and that's two inches. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but that gives you an idea. So if you want a chair, you cut it there. You could measure these and do it with pencil and cut it there. You want them about the same, so I can tell that one's higher, so I'm going to go a little higher. Okay? If I want a little dresser, I'm going to cut one half as wide, maybe an inch. There's my old cut. It's that high, and this one's this high. And I got to go over here and make another one. You think about how long you want your dresser. Okay. So here's what I've got cut. I've got that and I've got that. Looks just like that. So now you need to open that up. And we're going to bring, just bring your chair forward first. Bring your chair forward with your hand like this. And get your little crease in your hand and bring it forward. And go like this, pull the whole thing down, and then crease it with your finger. Mine's a little crooked. Okay? That's a little crooked. So I'm going to go back and straighten it a little bit. 
And all I have to do is see where it's crooked. I can just bring some paper up there and uh, have a difficulty here. Okay. And you do the same thing for the dresser. Bring the dresser this way and flatten. Okay. Now I have the front of my chair and the front of my dresser. Okay. So then you can take your marker, take your marker, and draw where your chair is, where that line is. Draw this part right here. I'm drawing right on the crease. I'm going to draw the back of my dresser and the edge of my little dresser. Okay, so I'll close it so you can see. So you can see how we get to the chair part. After that, you can begin to draw the back of your chair, however fancy you want it. Um, and put the back on it. Again, make it as fancy as you like. You can make your seat fancy. You could um, go like this. You can make straw on it, like one of the ones that Van Gogh has there. It could be a straw bottom seat. Um, there's just so many different ways you could do it. So the back of the chair goes on the back of the paper. And this is where the seat goes. I'm going to have to put the legs. I'm going to put the wooden part. You might put a rail there, or a foot rail. And put your feet down to where it folds. Put your legs down to where it folds. So if I pop that out, I do like to trace the edge. And you might have a wooden edge on it. So that's how I got my chair. That's just a real basic chair. You can make your chairs super fancy. Let me put this right here. On this chair, I made it fancy. I made those seats look like that. That makes them look sort of puffy like their material. And the tops of your chairs can be just amazing. Your little, um, your little dresser, you can hold it, do this, put the front on your dresser. And I usually go down the sides. If you wanted to just have one long drawer, make that drawer. My marker is sort of running out. Make a door. A, a knob on it and that can be your dresser just pop it back out you can make um, your floor you could put a rug on your floor you can make your floor rectangular or you could make your floor um, like a braided rug circular like that you can make a floor um, that is um, uh, I can't think of it crisscrossed like this, or you can make wooden floor, you can make a fancy lamp, you can make a window, you can make a clock. In the end, um, if you want to, you can even make little things to sit on the dresser. And what you need to do is make a little flap. Make a little flap. So here's one that I have colored. You'll take your glue stick and put a little glue on the back of this flap right there and take your um, bowl and pitcher and stick that there and it really makes a fun 3D representation of Van Gogh's uh, bedroom area in the yellow house that he wanted to have a place for artists to work and so um, I hope that you enjoy making these and again it's just some cuts if this one has two chairs and one little dresser, the back of the chair goes on the back of the paper. I flatten mine when I do all my work. Okay, so there's the top of the chair, top of the chair, top of the dresser. Here's the front where the legs go. Legs go. Drawers go. Ideas are just, you could just do so many fun things. I hope you enjoyed this project, and I hope you get to um, uh, color it. You can color it with crayons. Um, and I would draw with marker, but you're fine to draw with pencil and then outline and marker. It does sort of need that nice black line. I had fun coloring it. Um, again, we're, we're, we're learning about Van Gogh and, um, 
when he was in the south of France and at the Yellow House and were making some of the things that were in some of the portraits that he made, uh, pictures that he made of that time in South France. I hope you enjoyed this project. Please send me any pictures you have of your 3D uh, bedroom pictures from Vincent van Gogh. Thank you.